Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, November 7th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, November 8th. Another comatose day. Things were pretty slow. We didn't really move all that much. Now, on one hand, you can say, how come we're not going higher from here? Well, the market had a really good run last week, and it's just kind of plateauing out right now. We do have some overhead resistance that we're not able to break through yet. On the positive side, you can say, okay, well, at least we're not seeing a lot of selling at the index level for the S&P. We are seeing some profit taking in other areas. The mid caps and the small caps are back to showing some more weakness, but at least for right now, the S&P is holding up. Please know before I get started that I sometimes have problems uploading lately to Rumble. Sometimes I have problems uploading to YouTube as well. So if you can't find me on one platform, please feel free to look at look for me on the other platform. Let's go back and talk about what happened. We had a pretty flat open. The futures were actually negative. Europe was having some difficulties, but then we started to switch over and come back to the unchanged level and slightly positive by the time things opened in the US, but it still produced a flat open. And then after that, prices climbed up to R1 at 4376. We got up to R2 at 4387. Now, Monday's session was so flatlined that the R and S levels for Tuesday's session were not that far apart. And I'll show you that when I get to the chart. So it didn't really take very much to get to those levels. As the day went on, we went sideways between R2 and R1. Again, they were really close to each other. And we closed slightly above R1. We were up 0.28%, again, on below average volume. Now, you can take that a number of different ways. We're still maintaining price at this level, and we're not seeing a real pickup in volume. The market's kind of satisfied with where things are at right now. Or it's like, okay, if we're really going to get set to go higher or lower, we're going to need to set up the situation where a lot more volume ends up coming in. The technicals, we're still positive. <clears throat> and things are still hanging in there, but we're below resistance and we have a number of indicators that are still giving us extreme positive readings in the short term, as well as the intermediate term. It's about inflation, interest rates, growth concerns, and we're not going to get an awful lot of economic data this week to really shift that in one way or the other. We're going to get some, and that could be influential, but they're not really the big reports that we usually get. And the big geopolitical event continues to be what's going on in Israel. As I record this, yes, the trip that I had planned at the end of November has now officially been canceled, received word from the airlines and where we were going to stay and all that stuff. And OK, so I don't have to now announce that I'm going to be going on a trip. I may be going on a trip, but it's not to Israel. Some comments that we can make. The mega caps, and this is the same as after Monday's session. They held up pretty well. This is what's keeping the indexes in order for right now. The broad market is seeing a little bit more weakness. The NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 did advance on this day. So we're seeing a lot of tech stocks, a lot of the big stocks really seeing some improvement there. And there's also this thing called FOMO, the fear of missing out. Hasn't really led to a lot yet. It was probably last week. This is when people think, oh, the market's going down, it's going down. And then we have a couple of really strong up days and they're like, oh, no, nah, it's just a dead cat bounce. And then it keeps going higher and higher and higher. And now instead of acting on a technical analysis basis or a logical basis, they're acting on an emotional basis where they're like, oh my gosh, we've got to get in, we've got to get in. And that's usually when we tend to stall out and sometimes even turn direction and go the other way. The weak economic reports that are coming out from Europe also are giving some support to the U.S. Remember, the scenario that we've been working with is that the economy is stronger than expected. Now we're starting to see, not only in the U.S., but within Europe, that maybe things aren't as strong as we thought. Now, this gets to a point where right now that's kind of good news, but if it keeps on going that way, the market's going to shift it around to a point where bad news is going to end up being bad news, and we're just waiting for that balance to play out. Oil did close down. We're dropped under the 80 level now at 77.33, and then on a short-term basis, this is the same list that we had after Monday's session, the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14, but not the 20 yet. 
the stochastics, our force index, as well as the rate of change going back five periods. We also have the CMB composite, the PMO studies. That's in the intermediate term looking extreme. And one new addition is now the ultimate oscillator. And then here's the scenario that I alluded to and that maybe the Fed could be done raising rates if we see a continuation of weaker than expected economic reports and may might be done raising rates. And there's less of a fear now that they could possibly raise rates. We're still waiting for some information coming out of China to see how that will affect the U.S. markets. Of course, the whole situation in Israel, oil seems to be coming down, which is giving some support. Now, they said in Tuesday's session that this had to do more with supply and demand rather than inflationary pressures, which is why oil is starting to come down. And then earnings that are being released, that'll be on a case-by-case -case basis, but it can be very influential for the entire market. The dollar was up and interest rates were also up. And now that's giving some headwinds then to stocks as well. The 10 to the 2 and the 10 to the 3 month, that is still inverted. Sentiment didn't change. We were at 41 after Monday. We're still at 41 after Tuesday. Our trend is still positive. The ADX is still below its moving average. So that's a weakening trend, but it's still above 20. Our bias is positive and our momentum is positive. And then the economic reports, and these aren't major reports, so I don't have the charts to show you. The trade balance came in a little greater than expected at minus 61.5 billion. They had expected 60.1 billion. Last time it was a negative 58.7 billion. And consumer credit came in up as much as they had expected. It was up 9 billion, or last time we saw it down 15.8 billion. Then we're down at 4.57% for the 10 year yield. And that is still above the 4.02%. Here's the intraday chart where we're just flatlining here, especially in Monday and Tuesday session. And because Monday was not very wide between the high low spread, that means that the pivot points were not very wide for Tuesday session. And that also means they're not gonna be very wide for Wednesday session. But we had a flat open. It looked like we were going to go down a little bit, but we came right back and went above the unchanged level. We got up to R1, came up to R2, and that was pretty much the overhead resistance for the day. Drifted back up to R2 again, and we tried numerous times to get above R2. That didn't happen, so we closed a little bit off of that. Then looking at growth versus value, where in the intraday chart, we're still seeing value outperforming growth. Now, on the next chart, we are seeing some improvement here. When we look at S&P growth to value, where growth did outperform. Now, we've seen a couple of days now where this is showing some improvement. So this is under the surface positive action that we're seeing that could end up really helping the market when it starts to get back into gear. This growth to value ratio also ticked up just a little bit. Actually, it ticked up after Monday. It ticked down on the end of day chart. So again, we want to see this really going up and really showing some strength here, but we're just not seeing an awful lot of that yet. We're seeing some improvement intraday on this chart, but it's not really coming through to the end of day charts yet. Here's another look at growth to value with a different measurement and different look with the rainbow chart where we are showing some improvement here. We're starting to break out above this previous range, and that could be positive as well. Here's our trend where we're still below the moving average with the ADX. The green line's on top and ticked up a little bit. The red line is declining, but we are in a weakening trend. However, it's still above 20 and pretty much that same thing with the short term. We're below the moving average, green line on top, red line below. We're above 20 with the overall reading. And I shifted this over a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell because there aren't really specific dates on this graphic here, where maybe we're coming into that time if we see a little bit of weakness in the market where the VIX will shoot up a little bit, or if we continue to go to the upside, we'll continue to see the VIX fall. The ulcer index is starting to drop off. It's still above its moving average, but we're coming off of a pretty fearful situation there. And we were declining a little bit with the VIX on the line chart as well as the bar chart, but there's not an awful lot of movement. Volatility is pretty much going sideways, ticking down just a little bit when we close positive. The VIX to VVIX ratio, it's rolling over just a little bit, but not enough to really turn down. Overall, we're still continuing to go up. That still is longer term negative. Our VIX to three-month average of the VIX is continuing to go up. It's rolling over just a little bit, but we need to see some follow-through with this. 
The VIX to move ratio ticked up just a little bit after it really declined. This is just showing that volatility is starting to decrease with stocks when compared to bonds. And this is going back and forth like a ping pong match here, where after Monday session, I had to put this on the negative slide. Well, we're going back to the point where we're declining here with the five period simple moving average. So now it's back on the positive slide. But longer term, we're just barely starting to roll over here, but we're still continuing to go up with our longer term equity put call ratio. We are declining with this fear gauge and we're declining a little bit with this other fear gauge. So it's just showing that fear is really coming out of the market after we really had been declining. We're showing a little bit of an improvement here with our risk on to risk off ratio, but it's still having a tendency to, dec to decline longer term. We want to come back and really break out of this series of lower highs here. This is not a trend line that I have on here. This is just to denote overall direction. Looking at the advanced decline line, we actually ticked down just a little bit based on price as well as volume. We're still above the moving average based on price, but below the moving average based on volume. We're still showing that new highs are outpacing new lows where we're seeing the green line going up in a little bit of the red line. But overall, our five period is going up and our 10 period is going up. That's showing that inside the S&P, we are seeing some strength. In our advanced decline ratio, even on an update, it ticked down a little bit, but it's still above zero. Accumulation distribution. This could be positive as well. We did advance after Tuesday's session and we're above the moving average. And the red line, which is the moving average, is starting to turn up. The check in money flow did see a little bit of an improvement. This was a warning sign that we saw after Monday. The fact that this ticked back up after Tuesday, that's positive. And we're still underneath this other trend line. If we connect these previous highs right here, we haven't really come up to test that yet. We are still on the underside of this long-term trend line, which I'll show you when I get to the other chart. And then on the bottom, we have another day that is below average with volume. Here's where volume is below it's starting to turn down, but it's still above average when we take it together. The force index is continuing to be extreme positive. It came down, but it's still well above the Keltner band. The Stoke RSI is just flatlined. It's pegged near the top now, extreme positive, where the Williams percent R is also pretty positive right now and extreme. The CCI 14, it's not really, it could go higher than this, but we are in that extreme positive territory. And the, the short-term stochastics are extreme positive, as are the intermediate term. We're still positive and improving with the longer-term stochastics. We're still coming down a little bit with our rate of change going back five periods, but we're in this extreme positive territory. As you can see, the bars, we're just kind of chopping a little bit higher here, and it's not really doing much to change these this indicator. The standard deviation is starting to tick back up again when we look at the last 10 periods. Again, this measures velocity in one direction or the other, and it's picking up more of this big move that we saw up. So this is really starting to climb back up again. Looking at the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line, we did see a bit of weakness here. We dropped below this red line. We turned down just a little bit with our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE. We're still below this death cross that we saw with both moving averages as we decline slightly with this, this advanced decline line for the NYSE. There's another potential warning sign here. Now, this gave us a heads up last week, actually before last week, it started to turn up before we saw prices begin to bounce. Now it's starting to turn down. We don't really know because sometimes this does give us a leading edge as to what's happening. But other times it can give us a false signal. So we have to use other charts to confirm this. But this is a little bit of a warning sign to see the Swinland trading oscillator turning down based on price and volume. And here's the advanced decline line studies where we're declining with the NYSE. We're dropping below the moving average with the S&P, seeing some weakness with the mid caps and more weakness with the small caps. And we're still looking a little bit more positive with our go, no-go system. It would be even more positive if we could really break up out of this, but it's picking up positive movement right now. The TTM squeeze is showing some improvement, but it's not crossed over positive at least yet. The balance of power just inched its way back above the midpoint. That's showing some improvement. And we're above the midpoint with our highest high and lowest low values, but we're not really breaking out yet. But you can see the green line is the midpoint. That's starting to turn up. That is positive. 
The CMB composite, since we're not really moving right now, it's remaining extreme positive. And we're above the 50 period moving averages, both the exponential and simple. And that's a, a positive line in the sand right now. If we start the fall, will this end up providing some kind of support? If we can break out above this and see these lines turn back up, that would be more positive. And we're right in between the exponential and simple moving average on the 100 period. And then our moving average tree, we still have, what is this, the 50 period exponential moving average? Is that the purple? Okay, I guess it's the 100 period simple moving average. It, I have to look over here to get what all these colors mean, and they come up with the colors themselves. But we are showing some improvement, and some of the shorter term moving averages are starting to turn back up. The Ichimoku cloud, we're coming right into the underside of this red cloud that could provide overhead resistance. That kind of lines up with what we're seeing with our trend lines. We're just about ready to cross over positive with the vortex. We're not quite there yet. The red line is just barely above the green line. We have another decent day, and this could actually cross over and turn negative or positive. The ease of movement is showing some improvement, but it's still below zero. The bullish percent index continues to climb just a little bit, so that's positive. The summation index based on price and volume continue to advance. It would turn more positive if we could break above zero based on volume. We're also continuing to go up with the summation index for the NYSE, both based on price and volume. We're still positive with the Elder's Impulse System for the S&P. We're also showing some improvement with the RSI 14 and the RSI 9, and neither are extreme yet. On balance volume is also showing some improvement. And if we stay above this, the red line will continue to turn back up. When we look at the 200 day moving average study, we did come down with the S&P and which is kind of strange on an up day. It's, it's showing that there is some weakness inside the S&P. We also declined a little bit with our 50 period moving average study. And I'm keeping this on here for right now. We're above this 100% retracement level, which may act as support if we start to fall. If we continue to go up, I'll probably stop showing this chart. But you can also see this conglomeration of prices that we were at back in October when we were just chopping around, not going anywhere. The market's going to need some real catalyst to actually break us out above this and close above this. Otherwise, this is also acting as overhead resistance. Longer term with our FIB chart, we're also above the 61.8% retracement level. And with our PMO studies, we're still extreme with the PMOs that are rising, even though we're rolling over. We're looking positive with the buy signals, and we're also showing improvement with the PMOs that are above zero. The PMO itself is showing that there's positive momentum, also based on price and volume. The NYSE bullish percent index continues to show some improvement. And the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is continuing to climb, and this is more positive. The slope oscillator continues to show improvement. The MACD is also showing improvement. All of our oscillators are now crossing back over positive. We're not necessarily extreme with our standard deviations chart. We're still in the plus two area. We get nervous if we get up into the plus three area. The Chaikin oscillator is above zero and advancing. That's positive. The money flow is above 50 and positive. It's showing a little bit of life now. The ultimate oscillator just starting to get extreme positive. This is a new addition to our list and it's intermediate term. The Copic curve is also looking more positive, crossing over the red line. The parabolic SAR continues to be positive with the dots underneath. And this is the longer term trend line going from the June 2022 low to the March 2020, I'm sorry, the October 2022 low to the March 2023 low, and then extending this trend line, we are not able to close above this yet. So it looks like this is providing overhead resistance. Looking at Dow theory, we were up with the Dow, we were down with the transports, we were down with the utilities. So the transports are back to underperforming even more than they were before when you compare them to the Dow. And we're starting to go down again with the transports to S&P 500 ratio. We want to see this going up if things are more positive. The Zohorchak method has not generated a full-on buy signal, at least yet. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is declining, and this could give support to the S&P. It's already been helping it out as we've been going back up, but for this to fall even more may provide even more support. 
The S and P to utilities ratio is it's kind of conglomerated right down here in this mess of prices, but longer term it has been going up, and that is typically positive for the S and P. The 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows were still coming up and showing a little bit of improvement after getting an extreme reading. We had two extreme readings back to back, and now we're starting to bounce back up. We're still above zero when we look at the 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio. We're above zero based on price and volume, even though we did decline in Tuesday's session. We were down a little bit with the micro caps. We're not above 100 yet, but we're not setting a new 52-week low yet either. The hike in ASHI continues to be positive. The Keggy chart is positive. The Renko chart is positive. And the three-line break is positive. The equal weight did actually tick down where the S&P went up. So we're seeing a little bit more weakness when we look at the broader market. And here's the ratio showing that the big stocks are really outperforming the rest of the market. You can read this a couple of different ways, that the big stocks are really holding things together, but since they're outperforming, that means there's a whole universe of stocks that really aren't participating in the rally. The Dow is still above its 50 and 200 day moving average. If we can avoid that, we might avoid seeing this death cross here. If we do see some weakness and drop below the 200 day moving average, this will likely lead to a death cross for the Dow. The diamonds, though, are still positive. And the NASDAQ 100, this is where we're seeing a little bit of hope here. We did close just barely above this longer-term resistance line here, which was the previous all-time high. And the fact that we closed above this, that's positive. Now, can we keep going, or is this going to end up acting as some kind of resistance? We tried to break through it back in October, only to come back down. The difference this time is we actually closed a little bit above this line. And the QQQs still remain positive for the Elder's Impulse system. We're still looking more positive with the PPO, which measures momentum for the NASDAQ 100. And the NASDAQ also is breaking out above this R1 level, above its 50-day moving average. That's positive. And we're still in between this 50% and 61.8% retracement level. If we continue to go up, first we have to take out this previous high from October and then come possibly back up to this level that we were having trouble with previously. The small caps though, they're down and that's not a good sign for the market. They're dropping further below their 50 day moving average, also dropping below this pivot level. And when we look at the Russell 2000, we're still above 50, but declining with the RSI, working off of a death cross, but momentum is still positive after we were able to recapture the support area that was lost and then regained last week. The small caps, even though they're declining, they still remain positive for the elders' impulse system. A lot of that has to do with this huge gap that we're seeing in here. And the mid caps also are having a hard time getting back above their 200-day moving average, back above this pivot level, and they were down on the day as well. But they still remain positive because of this massive gap in here with the elders' impulse system. The FANG index is actually doing quite well. It was up 1.94% and is breaking above its 50-day moving average. And we're breaking above this trend line that I put in here. I tried to connect this high with this high. We actually were able to close above that. That could be positive, but again, it's more for the tech companies and the big tech companies. We're still above this longer-term trend line going back to 2009. That is more positive. And when we look at the Qs to the S&P, we did see an improvement there. We also saw discretionary, which finally had a good day. It actually is moving above its moving average when compared to the S&P. Large cap growth really outperformed large cap value, at least on a closing basis with this chart. And when we take the growth to value ratios, we're seeing improvements with the large caps, the mid caps, and we're coming back up to the moving average with the small caps. Our longer term new highs, new low study, it's starting to turn back up, but we're still below zero. That's because the black line is still above zero here, and eventually it's turning the red line back up, but we need to stay above this level to have that indicator turn back positive. This is something I brought out in yesterday's video. We don't see very many of these. It's the Zwag NYSE breadth thrust. We had a signal triggered back in March. And that's still on the books. Well, now we've just had another signal triggered. And this is very rare. And especially to see two of them generated together within the same year is even more rare. And the S&P 500, looking at their 50-period moving average, it did decline a little bit in Tuesday's session. 
The mid caps also declined a little bit with their 50 period moving average study and the small caps also declined a bit as well. When we look at the broad market, we're still negative. When we look at the moving average of the highs minus the lows, we're still below zero, even though we're showing some improvement. The dollar continues to be in an uptrend and was up in Tuesday's session. The financial sector is still above its 50 and 200 day moving averages. As long as it can stay above that, that's more positive. And I think I was incorrect. Bond yields were actually down instead of up where we were falling a little bit. And that did give some support to stocks where we were up based on price. We're looking a little better with the RSI. We're still working off of a death cross, but on a momentum basis, we continue to be positive. And here is Tom Bally's research where the utilities tend to not be strong. Industrials are strong. We're coming more now into the negative part where we might see some seasonality that works against the market before we get back into some more positive seasonality. So what's our outlook for Wednesday? It's still earnings season. We're still dealing with that, even though most S&P 500 companies have reported. Still watching the situation in Israel. The technicals are positive. We really haven't changed this. We're still becoming at least short-term overbought and somewhat in the intermediate term. We will get the weekly MBA mortgage applications index as well as wholesale inventories. Neither one of these are really market movers in and of themselves. And then the whole list of geopolitical events with Israel at the top of that list. Here's the updated economic calendar where we'll get just weekly jobless claims on Thursday. We're going to get consumer confidence on Friday. And again, none of these are really that big as far as influencing the market. Looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for November 8th, where we are positive for the Dow, but we're neutral to positive with the S&P and NASDAQ. We will be on the sixth trading day of the month, where you can see during a pre-election year, eh, it's not all that great when you look at the green dashed line. And then we're wondering where we're at in this whole mess, where we tend to have in the bigger picture, longer term positive seasonality during a pre-election year when the current president is running for re-election. And we're also into this other area with this seasonality study showing that things look good. Doesn't mean that it goes straight up. There are pockets of weakness along the way. And then looking at the NASDAQ during a pre-election year, where we tend to bounce, are we coming into the period of weakness? At least that hasn't been showing itself yet, but overall we tend to be fairly good. And then with the S&P also, we tend to see some positive seasonality, but we see some weakness throughout the month as well. And then Bitcoin, where the green line seems to be coming out of favor, but Bitcoin's still been hanging in there for right now. So some of the longer term seasonality seems to be kicking in. Here is a chart where we got up into the 36,000 range and we're closing down into the 35,000 range. So the scenarios, we're not going with the down one because we're just looking pretty positive right now. So if anything, that's what we go with, but we're really stalled out at the present time. We're not going with the sideways trend because our ADX is still above 20, showing that we are in a trending environment, even though it is weakening. Our warning signs, we're still keeping an eye on growth. In some instances, we're seeing where it's improving. On an end of day basis, we are, we're looking at it not really doing all that well, but it just depends on what chart you decide to look at. The daily special K chart is negative as well as the weekly chart. The longer term equity put call ratio continues to go up even though it's rolling over ever so slightly. The risk on posture, it's been, it bounced back in Tuesday's session, but longer term, it's still showing some weakness. The vortex is negative, but that could change. We could cross over to positive after Wednesday's session. Our longer term moving average study continues to be negative, even though it's ticking back up. The Russell, the small caps and the mid caps continue to work off of recent death crosses. The financial sector has generated a death cross, but we're back above both of the moving averages. If we can stay above that, that would turn things more positive. The positive signs, we do have another ZWAG NYSE breadth thrust that has been triggered. I'll keep this chart here for a couple of days and then it'll switch over to the weekly chart or the weekly video because this is a, a long-term chart that once it's generated, it tends to stay on the books for a long time. The equity put call ratio is back to going down. I put it back on this slide. Our oscillators are switching more over to positive, both for the S&P and the NASDAQ. The parabolic is positive. The bullish percent index continues to show advancement and is turning more positive. 
Small and mid-cap growth has been chopping sideways, but it's still in a longer-term uptrend. So our conclusion, we are positive. We're still in this state of becoming more overbought in the short term, but we're still right at that resistance level with the longer-term trend line. In the short term, we're also becoming more overbought and at resistance. In the intermediate term, just a little slightly overbought. We still have more room to run with these indicators. And long term, we continue to be positive since we're above the 200-day simple moving average. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a really good day, and I will talk to you in the next video.